Shout out to Fly Chef and what's up? What I like that with any pal hustler. Yeah, my cousin from pal, nigga, his name Shaboye. Got that shit tatted on him, nigga. I was asking, bro, what the fuck is that, nigga? <laughs> Pussy and what's this? I don't know what the fuck that is, but yeah, I'm a problem. Yeah, I don't know what that shit. Yeah, that nigga hilarious. Face Malone. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm a five real. That's my cousin, bro. That's my blood. I read it there, bro. I'm pretty sure, Yeah, yeah. Went to the New Year's party with your cousin Nick and wife. Y'all hold me. Chopper like, oh, me, man. You know, you know how to really do it. <laughs> he said, that chopper like, yeah, nah. <laughs> and he gonna let him go. Like, ah, 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 so I've been getting a lot of questions and calls about uh, the story that Jay Stone was talking about and uh, with the choppers and all that. And, and you know, folks been asking me when I, whenever I, when I ever kicked it with any fruit towns and this, that, and the third. So look, I, I'm going to just, I want to tell the story just so I don't, you know, so you can hear it and you know what happened. And, and uh, Cause I never, I'm gonna just be honest with you. I never really, I didn't grow up in the, with, around Damus. I didn't know very many Damus till I, I got into high school and I was meeting, um, I, 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 I would meet individual Pyrus or Bloods and, 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 and I had met a couple of them been cool. I knew, I knew one or two Damus from a bunch of different Damu hoods. And when you just meet, meet a, a rare rag or somebody on an individual personal level it ain't really nothing to it every every nigga knows somebody from another hood that you probably wouldn't fuck with if it wasn't a personal relationship that you done built built up and dealt with somebody that you done met and got cool with so i'm i knew a few damus here and there but i never been in like a damu hood and kicked it with no damus um at this time i never really did that ever you know what i'm saying um so uh, so now I'm gonna tell you the story about this particular New Year's party I went to. I got a homegirl named Naisha. Me and Na Na me and Naisha lived in the same apartment complex in Hawaiian Garden Apartments in Lakewood, and those was our stomping grounds. And in Hawaiian Garden Apartments, during this time, everybody in those apartments was close knit. If you was black, we all functioned together heavy. It didn't matter where you was from because Lakewood. It's like the yard. It's like being on a yard because you got you got parents who probably lived in Compton, Linwood, Watts, Carson, you know, all these little east side hoods, but they wanna um give their kids a better environment and give themselves a better environment. So a lot of people move to Lin I mean Lakewood and Cerritos. And so but the thing is is so many people parents had that same idea so now when you get to lakewood it's a bunch of people that's got the same mentality as you same they just moved from the same environment you just moved from and so all the like-minded people who grew from those environments still hanging together now in lakewood it's just everybody's from these different neighborhoods and so um and what causes the what causes not only this the blackness and the mentality causes people to come together but what really pushes it is that the mexican gangs the sa gangs over there are gangs that's been around forever you know we got gangs that's been around from the late 60s and the 70s but the body hawaiian gardens uh the body artesias these are very 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 big gangs and they've been around for a long time and and us being in lakewood but like we was in by the mall we not down on down on that side of delamo by the mall we was way on the opposite end almost in uh going to orange county but it's uh the more of the impoverished side if there's an impoverished side of lakewood this is the impoverished side but it's still a beautiful part of lakewood but this was the lower income side even though right across the street in cerrito this is multi-million dollars homes this section between um 
Delamo is the Trillia, Bloomfield to Pioneer. That little section right there. Um, but the Body Hill Wine Gardens, they're such a strong, powerful gang. The Vida Ortiz is such a strong, powerful gang. Vida Vida Hawaiian Gardens, they got their whole city locked. There's no other gangs in that in their city. It's one gang broken up into several different cliques, but it's all Vida Hawaiian Gardens. So they they strong. And just like if you in the county jail, it don't really matter what hood you from. When you get to 9500, 48, wherever you going, niggas got to get some structure because these essays is, is deep and they strong. So that build the corroborty of black people in the, in, the, in that particular neighborhood. Uh, you may have your, your, when you first move over there, it's, it's, it takes a second to get adjusted. Cause like me, I never had been around Damus. I mean, I knew, I knew one or two Damus, like family members, but I never had been around no Damus. So at first it took me a second to even talk to people. I only kicked it with females at first. Anyway, I'm straying way, way across the way. Cause I'm telling you, kind of give you background to how Lakewood is. So you got a warrior class, the soldier class that live over there. The soldier class join together. This is how pal hustlers come into existence because the warrior class, it don't matter if you're from neighborhood, don't matter if you a, a, a pyro, it don't matter if you a blood, don't matter what your hood is. Over as long as we we gonna we unifying around here so we can combat that that problem or that threat. I won't say problem. I just want to say that the the threat. Okay, fast forward. Boom. Now my girl Nina, she become one of my closest homegirls. We live right next to each other, so I, I I pass her house up every day, which means I'm gonna probably if I see her or hear any see her, I'm gonna stop by the house. Naisha always cooking that good chicken and shit. It, from even when she was 14, she knew how to fry that chicken up. Um, and anyway, I used to just go pull up on Nana all the time, just fall in, go kick it with Nana. Might burn something down or whatever. But uh, as you get, as I got tight with her, I got tight with her family. You know what I'm saying? I love her mama, I love her sisters. You know what I'm saying? I knew all her mama's sisters, aunties, and shit. And um, and then I started meeting her uncles and all her male cousins and her family with her family D they all from fruit town power but they might come to visit her because she living in Lakewood they get away from Compton for a little bit come over here it's all it's all cool you know what I'm saying good tree to burn good company you ain't got to worry everybody cool over here you know what I'm saying so I'm getting to know her peoples she had a cousin named man couple other cousins she knows my, my man Shaboya I usually call him I never called him that I always call him face but you know I'm getting to know all her peoples and they and they deep now my tight dog my man Woodrow Mr. Daley Narrington um he the down of the HG apartments but he and her are this is my my close friend she my close home girl they start dating you know now they in a relationship they in a real relationship so here it come New Year's, her people's throwing a party. So my nigga Woodrow, like, come with me, come with me to the uh not nine them people's throwing a, a New Year's party, come with me uh to the party. And New Year's always been my favorite holiday. New Year's and, and Fourth of July. So we uh shit, this is my dude, you know what I'm saying? And I know these I know if it's her people's throwing a party, it's gonna be a real rare function. So I was a little reluctant at first, but this is my dude, my, and me and this nigga been through, my name, I'm telling you, me and this nigga been through real war, life and death situations, um, real shit. Like, me and this nigga been through several, several events that could have went bad. Did go bad, but we stuck it out, rolled through the whole thing. Like, every time, like, we've been through shit that we could have died or went to prison um more than one time i'm gonna just say it like that um so uh so this nigga say you know it's straight i trust him you know what i'm saying because even if it ain't straight we didn't had our life on the line together and both of us know how each other gonna react in that situation and so you know this is my guy I, you know fuck it i roll with you so uh but i never but that's what i said now when, I, when we got there 
It was in it was in Watts, not Compton. And um the street looked quiet. It was a nice little cool little section in Watts. It was already nighttime because it's New Year's. We're getting ready for a New Year's party. But when we got there, everything seemed cool. Nobody's on the street. But when we got in the house, the house was mm, it was it was it was super flamed up in the house. Now instantly I'm not scared, but I am cautious in the mug because I ain't never been around this many Damus before. I ain't. I know I'm out of. I, I'm a hundred percent out of bounds, and so is this nigga. The nigga, my man Woodrow, he was raising the Palmer blocks, and our natural vernacular is crit based. We we ain't been around no Damus. You know what I'm saying? So our nat, my natural vernacular in high school was crit based. So just in my natural talking, I may say something that says, "Oh, this nigga not." one of us so i got that in my mind and i'm not nervous because i know my peoples that i'm with are reputable people from their neighbor from this neighborhood which they are all from fruit town the whole party was from fruit town but i know they you know what i'm saying but i'm a friend of a friend right so you know what i'm saying so i don't i don't know but i just know i'm always cool in every situation i know i could kick it with everybody but still it's different right so boom we at the party we chilling we chilling we having a good time and anytime one i you know one thing about me and woodrow we're gonna always have that that natural icebreaker and so we had a pocket full of tree and once you start blowing smoke with somebody and and you know that kind of knocked down the tension nigga might not even hit you up after you pass them the blunt so we we smoking we got plenty of tree we smoking with everybody we get you know what I'm saying? anybody coming out in our area we hitting it and passing them the weed and you know what I'm saying? we having a good time and uh and then right when they get to like 11 45 i'm 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 I got now I'm tipsy a little bit. I've been smoking, and somewhere I'm in the conversation. I said, "Red rag." Well, I don't know what fuck. I, like I said, I don't know what the, we was talking about, and I don't know what this happened to me more than once in in a situation with this nigga Wood. He took me around some dime moves. I said, "Such and such is a red." No, I was oh I was talking about somebody. I was like, "Nah, he a red rag." You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know what I'm saying? But dime moves don't use that language so you saying well why is it what's wrong with that nothing's wrong with a person saying red rag uh, when the niggas say red rag that's normally a crips way of talking about a blood without being disrespectful right but a a, a, a damu gonna hear that and recognize that ain't the way they talk they don't talk like that right and it's not a disrespectful term it's just you know it's not your but they know that's not their vernacular so when I said that, I caught it internally, like fuck, but I still kept talking, trying to be natural. And one of the Damus that was in the circle of our smoke said, ooh, blood, I think we got us one. That he said it low and he said it to the dude next to him. But I heard it. And, but thank God, the dude, one of the dudes he said it to was Nai Nai's cousin, one of her cousins. And he was like, nah, blood, that's, uh, that's, that he cool. But when he said that, that also told the story is, nah, he ain't no dumb move. He ain't no red rap. He is what you thinking, but he's straight. So now even that give me pause the way he said, nah, nah, he cool. When he start talking to this dude, I look at the, my, the clock and it's, now it's like 10 minutes or 8 minutes to 12. And I turned to the homie Woodrow and I'm like, damn, we forgot to get the champagne, bring the champagne bottles out the car. Because I listened enough to know they ain't finna trip. You know what I'm saying? And if they is finna trip, it's almost midnight. And we finna get the fuck out of here after the, after we pop this midnight bottle and this, that, and the third. Because we've been dancing. It's, it's been like a real fun party. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody dancing and shit. It seemed like a family function, but it's not. But that's the vibe. It's more a family function, but it's, it's, it's a hood function. But it feels family function functionish so but um so me and this nigga will we go out we leave the backyard go out to the front the whole front of the house the front block this empty house nobody's in the front of the house at all it's, it actually seemed eerily quiet 
compared to how loud it is inside the house and in the backyard, how in the front of the house you can't hear anything and, and, and the whole block is, is pretty quiet. So we both walk to the car and he get the bottle out the car and I'm telling him while we walking, I'm telling him about what had just happened, what I just accidentally slipped up and said because he didn't hear it. So we kind of talking and laughing about that, you know what I mean? Because he knew I was leery. And then all of a sudden, uh, AK-47 just went off. Blah, 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 blah. Shit, we hit the dirt. Because we thinking these niggas, oh, these niggas, are, because of what the story I just said, and because of the environment, these, I, first thing that uh, comes to mind is, damn, they finna try to, they trying to kill us. Blah, 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 blah. We hit the dirt. Because we couldn't tell where it was coming from. Then more shots. Blah, blah, blah. Shotgun shells. Boom, boom, boom. It sounded like more than 10 assault rifles. It sounded like four or five different shotguns. It was so... Man, it seemed like it was um, a war going on. Like, you never heard so many fucking assault rifles. It it, 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 it could have been sounding like more than 10. It just sounded like it was an, it was sounded like you was in Desert Storm and you had Saddam on one side and you had U.S. forces on the other and it was going down. And so what me and this nigga did, we hit the deck. The, the, the shots started increasing and getting so loud. Me and this dude crawled up underneath the car. We was underneath the car. Shells hitting the ground. This is how crazy it was. We can hear the shells hitting the ground. It was so many of them. And then we stayed up under that bitch. We stayed up under that bitch. Eventually the shells stopped. And we just said, under that shit. I'm, in, I'm underneath that motherfucker like, damn, man, this nigga's trying to kill us. You know what I'm saying? I asked this nigga, we, we, we finally get quiet enough that we we come out. Say then so but so you know we we look around ain't nobody out there we kind of laugh because we I ain't gonna lie then we thought we was gonna die at least I did I thought I thought this nigga was chipping us trying to chip us all the way out I asked the nigga man what time is it see we got enough time New Year's had cracked off <laughs> New Year's had cracked off while we was going to the car to get the bottle but we had started talking and we didn't really nigga New Year's had cracked off while we were standing in the front yard talking about what had just happened and New Year's cracked off. Who, one of our watches was off. So we didn't realize when I said it was 10 minutes till, it was like two minutes till. So, um, nigga, we crawled up under the motherfucking cars for dear life and dear safety. And uh, come to find out, New Year's had cracked off. And so we had missed the whole little champagne bottle pop and all of that, this, that, and the third. So that's the, that's, that's the story. That's what happened when, that's when the nigga started talking about... Uh, uh, choppers like Vietnam, and the, and and the story was like, you know, uh, I just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a piece of the clip that what he was saying, and and just put it at the front of this. I ain't gonna take the whole conversation we had, but this way you if you didn't hear, like some people asking me what was he talking about, then this will be the uh, oh, fuck. Is that the police? All right, I'm about to get off. Oh, somebody done broke into the, uh, somebody done broke into the Best Buy. Cons, Cons Electrics and stuff. Somebody broke in, police already. It's seven o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah, I'm at the gym. I'm gonna go get this, uh, you know, I can't get this gut down, but we're gonna try to work on everything else.